Hoi everyone, this video is the first of many when we will be taking a look at the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. So I am going to have a series on these. We will be interfacing it with different electronic components. And so this is a microcontroller designed by Raspberry Pi. They actually made the chip on this, the processor and everything like that is made by Raspberry Pi. And it is a microcontroller unlike the other Pis, which are like a full computer. And those CPUs are made by Broadcom, but this one is made by Raspberry Pi. So let's get on to programming this thing, hooking up electronics and things like that. So I have a breadboard right here. And so you will need some kind of breadboard, ideally. And so you don't need one this big. There are ones that are about half this size. You can just get whatever works for you. You won't need the breadboard for all of these things. And you don't really need it for any of them, but it really helps a lot. So the next thing you need is obviously a Raspberry Pi Pico, which you can purchase using the link in the description. And then you need a press button switch or any kind of switch, really. And then you need some LEDs, however many you want and you need a resistor you will need you know a couple hundred ohms and so let's get on to the video so what we want to do is first set up our pico so these are the parts for this tutorial you will need more for others but let's set up our pico right here so I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi to program this, although you can use any computer that has Tony installed. I will link that in the description. Basically, you want to take a micro USB cable and plug it into your Pico and plug the other end into a Raspberry Pi or other computer you are using. However, when you plug it in, you want to hold down this button, boot SEL, you want to hold down that button, then plug it into any available USB port on your computer you are using to program it. And now you can release the button. And if we look at our Pi right here, we can see that it is recognizing the drive. So we can just close that out. But now we need to download a file. We need to download a UF2 file. So what we want to do is head over to the link in the description right here. And so this is the Raspberry Pi Pico getting started page. And so we are going to be programming in Python, micro Python to be specific. And so you want to go right here on this page. And then you want to download the UF2 file right here. So that is downloaded. Now what we can do is head over to our downloads folder on our Raspberry Pi. And then we have the UF2 file. I actually downloaded this before. So we will use the one that I downloaded originally. And so we just drag that into RPI RP2, which is the Pico drive. And once we drag that in there, the Pico will automatically reboot. So it will eject the drive like that. You may get a warning but it's all right. Now what you do is you just close the windows and now you want to make sure you have Tony installed and so it is installed on Raspberry Pi OS which I recommend you use for this tutorial or something based on Raspberry Pi OS but you may need to install Tony. Now you go to the Raspberry, you go to programming and you run up Tony right here and so you will need to do some setup in it. So you want to click switch to regular mode. And so now you can quit Tony and restart it. And now you can go to tools, options, interpreter. And then you want to switch it to micro Python Raspberry Pi Pico. And so now you can select one of these. And so hopefully that's the right one. And so this is running a program from before I had, but I can just stop or restart that. Now what we want to do is, well, this should give a prompt saying Raspberry Pi Pico and such. 
let's type our first line of code here print and then you can do whatever you want hello from Fort Non and so you just do it just like that and so that is running off your Pico so you want to make sure everything is working there now what you can do is you can start programming so I'm going to get in a view of the Pico I can put these down in the corner and I recommend you watch these on a larger screen so if you're currently watching this on your phone you may want to switch to a larger screen because of the things we are going to be doing right here. So this is the Pico and you can see I have this already. And now what we need to do is we need to, well first of all we're going to program the internal LED but then we will need to hook up some stuff. So let's program the internal LED. So you want to do from machine import Pin, and you want the P to be capitalized, but everything else needs to be lowercase. This is very case sensitive. And now you want to do from U time, short for micro time, import sleep. And so that will give us a sleep function. And now right here we want to do LED equals pin. And then you can use this code if you're doing an actual LED. You can use this code with the, the pin of the LED. But we are just using the internal LED, so we will do this. And then we will do pin.out, and you want out to be all uppercase. So you can just follow this code right here. Okay, so now we have this bigger, and so we can see things more easily right here. So now we have that LED and now what we want to do first of all is so there's an LED on the Pico and so it is a small LED on the board and so that's what we are going to be programming. So we want to do LED dot toggle and then just do it just like that. Now we can press F5 and these should run the script. But we have to save it first, so we will select Raspberry Pi Pico, and now I'm going to save this to main.py, and I'm going to overwrite that. And now the LED is on. The thing is, we don't have a way to turn it off or anything, so I'm going to turn this into a loop. So you want to type while true, and now you indent this with a tab so you can just follow my my examples because I'm typing characters that I'm not saying because that's what you have to do in code now you do sleep and then I'm going to do it for one second so that will blink it on and off every second so look at that we have our first program running on the Pico and it is just using the internal LED but we will hook up some other LEDs for these in a second. So have fun with that when you are ready to stop it. You can press the stop button or you can do control F2, which is what I'm going to do. And so now that has stopped the program. And so we will get some stuff out and I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, for the next section, I'm going to be interfacing an LED with the Pico. So I have these little cards here. You could find something like this online, just, you know, a online version of this, but I have it printed out in a card form. And so it has all the pen mappings on the Pico. So we are going to be connecting it to pen zero, which is this one right here. And so let's get this Pico plugged in. So I'm going to actually unplug it from the Pi for now. And you can see the Pi says it's disconnected. Now I'm going to just push it into my breadboard. So I'm going to do it right here and just push it down in. Okay, so that is there. And now what we need to do is run a jumper from pin zero. So I will get this one right here. And so I will plug this in to this pin. So it is the, the pin, the 
right now on your left, the top left pen, as you're looking at it right now. And then what you want to do is take a resistor of a couple hundred ohms. And so these will go in front of the LED. So what you want to do, take an LED, the color of your choice. And basically there is a long pin and a short pin. And so you want to plug it in and you want the long pin to be the one with the resistor. So let's plug it in right here. And so in a breadboard, there are strips of metal going across right here. And so on each side, there is a strip. And so if we plug something into here, it is going to connect right here. So also there is a flat side on the LED and that is the negative, also known as the short one. And so there is a resistor right here. And so I'm going to just plug that in there and connect it. So basically we have power running from the Pico over to here and then it is going through the resistor and into the LED. Now we want to take another wire going on the other leg of the LED or you can take one of these if you would like if you have the, the ground connected to your Pico. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to connect it. So the third pin down on this side is the ground and also on this side there is ground. But you, you can take one of these if you have it. I will put a link to a Pico kit down in the description. But basically on the third pin down you want to connect these right here and you want to connect it to the blue ground thing right here. And so now what we can do is we can connect the other leg. We can just connect it over to ground like this. And so now our, our circuit is all wired up. So now what we want to do is plug our Pico into our Raspberry Pi or other computer just like that. Now we want to press Control F2 or click the stop restart back end and so now we are here so in Tawny what we want to do is change this line change it to pen zero so LED equals pen zero pen dot out just like that and the rest of our code will work just fine and so now we press F5 or we can click the play button and it starts blinking our LED so there you go you have a working blinking LED. Now what we need to do is add a press button switch. So let's go ahead and do that. So now let's connect a button to our Pico. Right here we will be able to control our LED with the button. However, it will be done through code, not through a direct circuit. So first of all, Let's unplug our Pico from our computer, just like that. And now what we can do is we can basically build another circuit off of these. So basically what we are going to do is have our button right here. And we are going to insert these into the breadboard. And you want to insert it just like that so that the legs are on both sides. So there are groups of legs and you want them to be like this on both sides. And so now what you want to do is basically take some wires and you basically want to connect one side of the button to a positive terminal and you want this to be the one right here. So it is basically five down from the top this is where the voltage comes in so then what we will do is take the other end i'm actually going to move this here we will take the other end and connect it to pin 10 which basically you count up six from the bottom and then the next one is pin 10. just like that so we should have these connected to these, which is the fifth pin down. Then the button is right here. Then you count up six and then you go one more and that is the one. And so then we can plug these back into our computer and it should start our same program again. 
what we want to do is press Ctrl F2. And so now we want to create another object here, right here. So I'm going to call this button. And then we want to do button equals pen and basically do the same thing, but it's going to be pen 10 this time. And then pen dot in comma pen dot pull underscore down. So that will be all uppercase right there and in will be uppercase as well. So now we basically have LED and we have button. Now what we want to do in our loop right here, what we want to do if button underscore value, basically this checks to see if the button value is one, which will be pushed in this case. Then we want to do LED dot toggle and then we want to do sleep, but I'm going to have it sleep for a half a second this time. So now let's try this code. So let's press F5. So I guess there is something wrong with my code. I was supposed to put a period here instead of a comma. And this is not supposed to be an underscore. This is supposed to be a period. Okay, now it sounds like it's working. So what we will do is press our button and nothing happens. I figured out the issue. It's that this wasn't connected quite right. It wasn't connected to the pen on the button. We've had a lot of issues, but now it should be working. Yes, it's working. You can toggle the LED on and off with these buttons, but if you do it too quickly, it won't register all of them because it waits a half a second, then it checks to see if the button is pushed. Otherwise, it would be constantly toggling it on and off. So if we hold it down, we can see that the LED flashes every half second. So that is our program today, and that is all we have for today. And I hope you join us for the next tutorial and we will be doing stuff with servo motors. We will be doing various things like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, you can do that and that will give you access to the next tutorial. It will let you know when that one is coming. So until next time, we will see you next time. Subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video and until next time.